waited tables, he graduated debt free in four years. Not a quarter from the government, no loans, no money from his parents. Why can't kids do that today? Because of government aid. Because so much money is made available to students so cheaply, they take all that cheap money and they bid up college tuitions. And the universities know this. The universities know no matter how high they raise their prices, the students are going to pay it because they're getting the money from the government. So every year they raise their prices and every year the students get the money from the government to pay it. If we had a free market in education, none of this would be happening. College would be cheaper today than it was 10 years ago, than it was 20 years ago. Just like plasma TVs are cheaper. Just like cell phones are cheaper. You know, we got more kids in school, economies of scale, we should be educating them cheaper per pupil. With all the computers, all the technology, education should be coming down. And in a free market it would be. But the politicians come in, they screw it all up, they try to get the votes of the students, so they promise them aid to education, and now, after a generation of doing that, now the kids need the aid because college tuitions are so expensive. But all of the benefit goes to the universities. They get all the money, the kids get stuck with the bills. But if we just got the government out of the system, you know, and the same thing happens with, with housing, the same thing is happening with health care, anywhere the government interferes, they screw it up. The free market brings prices down and brings quality up. The government brings quality down and prices up. Yeah, you talked about smaller government. Um, give me your two top areas where you would cut if you were in charge today. Well, I mean, I've got to cut pretty much everything across the board. But I think the biggest cuts have to be where the real money is, and that's in the entitlements. So what we have to do is we have to level with the American public and let them know that, you know, they were, the government overpromised, that the U.S. government is running Social Security the same way Bernie Madoff ran his investment scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. It doesn't work. It never worked. It never will work. And so it has to be reformed. There's no, and we can't keep avoiding it like it's a third rail, because... If we do, then everybody on Social Security is going to be broke because the, pay, the Social Security checks will have no value because inflation will destroy them. So we've got to get a handle on that, and we've got to get a handle on it soon. There has to be across-the-board cuts. Look at all these government departments we have, Department of Energy, Department of Education. We can, we can eliminate these departments. We don't get any energy out of the Department of Education. Why is the federal government involved in education? What are they doing? They have no business to be involved in education. We, we have to start getting the government out of the things it has no business being involved in. Look at what the Constitution says. There's nothing about education. The word education doesn't appear once in the Constitution. What is the government doing? They're doing a lot of things that they shouldn't be doing. They're doing things that are better done at a state level. But the state can't do it because the government is taking all the money away from them. I mean, look at Connecticut. I mean, Connecticut, we send much more money to Washington than we get back. Right? We would be much better off if we could stop that. You know, Chris Dodd tries to make a big deal about the pork barrel legislation that he brings back. But it costs enormous, it's, it's a huge cost. I don't want to send you know, dollars to Washington and then beg for pennies. I want to stop them from taking the dollars in the first place. So we need to just take a mean vote to the government. I mean, the government is enormous. I mean, Roosevelt's last budget, Roosevelt, was $8 billion, right? He doubled Hoover's budget of $4 billion. $8 billion, $8 billion. If you adjust that for inflation, right, that's like $160 billion. We're spending now 20 times as much as Roosevelt at the end of the New Deal. I mean, it is absurd how much money the government is spending. It's got to stop. But, you know, that means that people who are getting government checks are going to have to stop getting those checks or get smaller checks. But it has to happen or they're going to destroy the whole country. We don't have that many more years. So, you know, I think the main thing the government should be doing is national defense. That should be the main focus of, of the federal, even as late as the Kennedy administration. The Defense Department was still more than 50% of the budget. Now it's tiny. It's like, what, 20%? You know, the interest on the national debt maybe is more than, you know, we got we to gotta return the federal government to the thing it's supposed to do and, and get it out of all the things it's not supposed to do. But even in defense, I'm sure we're overspending. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of fat in the defense department. There's, we have people all around the world. We have troops in all, all sorts of countries. We probably don't need all these troops in Japan. We don't need these troops in Germany. I mean, the, the Cold War is over. You know, we, 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 we can cut back. But these military bases are like government departments. They, get, they have their own constituencies. Nobody wants to shut them down, and you know the people who are out there and living, they live a good life, you know, on you know, on the government, you know. And, and, but it's got to come to an end, and it's just across the board. We just have to spend a lot less money because we're broke, right? We got 13 trillion dollar national debt because we spent too much money. It's not because we didn't tax enough. Taxes are high. You know, years ago there was no income tax, there was no payroll tax. I mean, how did the country run? How did the country function? You know, even, even before the Second World War, 
there was no, the, the payroll tax came in in 1943. The income tax came in in 1913. But the average American didn't even pay it until the Second World War. And that was because it was a temporary wartime tax. Of course, we, it, when the war ended, the tax did. You know, the tax stayed on. But before that, nobody paid income taxes. No one paid Social Security taxes. I mean, how did the country survive? How did we have an industrial revolution? How did we become the richest country in the world with a tiny government? That's why we became the richest country in the world, because we had a tiny government, because people got to keep what they earned. Right? Now the government takes everything that we earn. I mean, the government takes more than half my income. I mean, that's ridiculous. And it's going to be worse. Under, I mean, if we get these new taxes under Obama, my tax rates can go over 60%. That means I get to keep 40 cents of every dollar I earn? Why bother? You know, why bother? Just cash it in. You know? and, and, and eventually that's what happens. You just can't tax people to death and expect them to keep working. You just can't keep taxing businesses to death. I think you're going to keep on providing services and goods and jobs, because they're not. You know, people, people aren't doing it out of altruism. You know, people are trying to make a profit for themselves. And if they can't do it, they're not going to work. And if, and if, and if, and if businessmen aren't going to work, then the jobs are going to go to them. What's what's your views on the support the foreign policy? Uh, you know, war in Iraq, war in Afghanistan, as well as uh, you know social issues. Yeah, I was uh, against abortion and uh, gay marriage. Yeah, I was against uh, going into Iraq. I was very strong about it. You know, on my on on, on video, I thought it was going to be another Vietnam. I just did not think we should have gone into Iraq. Um, but I mean, I think the foreign policy. We have to have a very strong foreign policy that protects American interests. We need to be more like a Teddy Roosevelt, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. I think we have to be aware uh, that there are threats and we have to take action against those threats. But we don't need to, you know, occupy other countries uh, with, you know, with enormous uh, uh, troops. You know, I mean, we're talking about countries that, you know, that are relatively poor. I mean. We don't, do we need all these troops in Afghanistan? We, we don't, do we need to have all these troops in Iraq? I mean, they weren't really that much of a threat. To the extent that they have an installation that we think is developing nuclear weapons, we can demand that they let us inspect it. And if they don't let us inspect it, we just blow it up. But that's it. We don't have to go in there. We don't need all this. We have, we have the best weapons. These guys, you know, in Afghanistan, they're, 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 they're riding around on camels. I mean, what difference does it make? I think 